So the point of this, which may be easy or not, is that you are connecting your website to your account on the Search Console. Here I'm adding my site, victor.com. I'm adding the version without www, and I would be selecting either the recommended method or an alternate method. Once I've done one of those, I would click Verify. Now mine's going to fail. If I click Verify, it's going to say, we couldn't, we weren't able to verify. Obviously, because I, I don't actually own that website. I can't exactly upload a file there or edit the code or whatever. But if it were my website, I would I would do one of these methods, recommended or alternate, and click and come back to click verify, and then it would tell me it would give me a green check mark that it worked. Because this is just my testing environment. It's not going to quite work. I'm going to click not now, but yours should have worked. I'll click not now. And in my, in my case, it's going to tell me it doesn't work, but um, if I click on Search Console, uh, click back on Search Console, and I think most of us are at this point here where we see something that looks like this. Mine obviously says not verified because it's not verified. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you in a moment what the whole point of this is. And you can add, I think, up to 100 websites to verify, to track the health and track the data of the website. I just did, or attempted to do, the non-www version. I also want to add the version with www. So notice I can add another property. Because I've already verified one, the second one should happen a lot easier. So just to show you, in, for completeness sake, I will click Add Property again, and this time I'm going to add the version with www. Continue, and then the same method that I verified it previously, I would just select that method again and click Verify. And if this was all working, then it would tell me I've got the WW version and the non-WW version. They'd both be verified. It would have a thumbnail of what my page looks like, and I have both versions. And if I had further, if I had, let's say, blog.victor.com, shop.victor.com, I would add those as well, because all of those, technically, in Google's eyes, are different kinds of websites different traffic. I want Google to tell me as much as possible all of it, all of the information that it knows about my, um, my site. And for some of this, this was relatively easy, and for some of us it, it wasn't. But this is an important step to setting up to use Google for for your statistics, for your analytics, for the insights of your site to, to keep track of its health. Search Console is going to tell us information about our traffic and keywords and such, but it's really much more about the, the health of your site. Does it detect malware? Are there broken links? Can it not find your site? Is your server down? That's what Search Console is mostly for. Then we will look at analytics in a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log out so that I can log in into an account that has been fully set up just to show you what that's like. Just one moment, let me sign in with a fully set up account. Alright, so um, I've got then a version here. Let me look at it this way, detailed view. Okay, so mine is like this where I've got several um, properties, several clients. Here's a client that we just started to work with. 
So it's got these big, these big scary exclamation warnings. Don't worry about that. Then I've got these other ones. Okay, so then I've got these. And let me organize this alphabetically. So same sort of thing here, where this is a particular client we have. There's the non-W version, WW version. They've been uh, verified. If I, if any of these sites have any problems, then they would tell me. Just like these have problems, but I know that these have problems. It's still a testing site, so it's severe health issues. I'm not worried about it. So these are the different uh, clients. Little thumbnail to show verification and such. And okay, great. So I've got all my sites added here. So what's 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 it for? Um, once I've got a site, or as many as I want, I think up to a hundred. I would be. I could get messages here that tell me errors or issues or things to fix with a particular website. But then, with a particular website, I can actually click its link. And since if you've just set yours up, you're not going to get very much usefulness out of it. But I'll show you this for some sites that do exist. If I click on that particular client, you can click on it. You won't see too much, but if you click on it, you you might see some information. Here's an example. There's three main sections, crawl errors, search analytics, and site maps. So this is telling me... Take care of a lot of customers, right? They easily risk your on, right? Yes. Take care of a lot of customers mm -hmm. and traffic. 3, That's right here, 3,000. Mm -hmm. Like a month? In one month, yes. Maybe over a month. So this is telling you within the month it was a very popular day, Thanksgiving, of course. <clears throat> so this is one of the reasons why we want to set this up. It's going to tell us, are there any problems with the site? DNS is fine. The server seems to be OK. The server's connectivity seems to be OK. Something called robots text I'll mention that seems to be OK. It does seem to say that there are 21 broken links, perhaps. Uh, and sometimes those broken links are legitimate, or sometimes they're not. But I wouldn't have known that until I set this up. I can check what are the broken links. And I know that with this particular site, sometimes that happens because there are these events that happen that then get removed from the site because they're over. But Google still thinks, why doesn't this page exist? Well, the event is over. Within this time period of one month, this is the sort of traffic that happened. It seems to be between 100 and 200 clicks per day. And in the time period, 3,000 and a half clicks. And then we'll talk about sitemaps in a bit more detail. But this is what Google sees in my site that there are 155 links on the site. And that includes web pages and images. Notice images are very high compared to actual pages. Three warnings. What are the warnings? I can click to view it. But this is an overall then sense of the health of my site. Um, <clears throat> these buttons at the top are clickable, which would go into different screens over here. I'll look at these screens in a moment. But this is a quick overview of things. Clicking on crawl errors would give me this information. Again, these aspects of the actual server, the hosting provider, seem to work fine. Errors, based on today's check, there's 21 not found links, and notice that's been decreasing. If someone tries to view the website on the desktop or laptop, so a regular computer, there might be 21 links, 21 things that are not found, which could include pictures as well. So taking a look at this is very useful. Smartphone. That's good. Zero broken links there. There were some broken links which we took care of, and then now we have no more broken links. And this is a very important thing to look at. I bet at some point, eventually, the smartphone tab will be the first tab visible because smartphones, there's so much traffic coming from them now. People are perhaps using smartphones much more than a desktop because you have it always with you, perhaps. So I bet in a future version of Search Console, this one will be first. 
And then feature phone. These are these old types of phone, like flip phones, that people hardly use. But this shows that there were errors. They've been fixed. Question? What's a soft four? What's what? A soft 404. A 404 error is that a page is missing, that it can't find it. There could be a soft one or a hard one. I have to um, double check the documentation exactly the difference between the soft one and the hard one. Both of them basically, there's something missing. And um, as it shows you there, it could tell you what's missing. And again, I forget exactly what the version, what the soft or the hard one is, but when I see either one, I then have to deal with it. Control back to the desktop. Mm -hmm. Maybe 21 not found. You said these are like broken things, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like they try to click on the, the link on the desktop, but they won't take them to where they want. Where they want, yes. That's what this is that Google is simulating a desktop computer trying to access these files, mm -hmm. and then it can't find it. Well, those are the Exactly. It tells you the files right here. Yes, and so the problem here is the old version of the site used to have a folder called HTML, menu.html. The new version doesn't use that method. So it's trying to find files that don't exist anymore, such as the old Flash slideshow. So that's why it's saying we can't find these files. Well, that's okay because the, f the structure of the site is no longer using this HTML format. I can check here. When was this detected? So in our particular case, we need to make some setting changes so that these links are no longer broken. Yes. So, okay, so if you have an old site and you rebuild it to the new site, what happens to the analytics? Does it change or do you have to add, it, add property again? Or do you just pull it down and then go back up? Well, that's a multifaceted answer because okay. um, if, if we have an old site and we're replacing with it with a new site, that's going to require uploading the new files to the server. That's one thing. And then what happens with analytics, well, specifically Search Console, here is we have to mark it as fixed. Oh. So notice, okay, this, there no longer is a catering.html file. So I select it and I say mark as fixed. This will tell, has this been fixed? We'll say, okay. So then it'll take time and it'll process it and then it'll decrease it because oh, okay. we have fixed. How you, uh, that's how you fix it. Yeah. Basically, on the server, we make sure all the links are correct. And then here on Search Console, we come in and say, okay, this one's been fixed. That one hasn't. Um, this one, this one's old. This is from 2011. That doesn't exist anymore. So we'll say, mark as fixed. It doesn't exist anymore. And then as it processes your changes, those numbers are going to go down. That's what, what we did on the smartphone one. Because so much more traffic comes on smartphone, we were more on top of this one to make sure this one is fixed. And we can see here, it's fixed. So what's the number of types? How are you going to in Google's opinion, these are the ones that fix these as fast as possible, from one to whatever. The author page, for example. So it says it can't find those those pages. That w those two are things to t that we need to fix, um, because uh, author pages are are important screens on a website. Especially if you, have, if you have multiple people editing the website, each of them has their own author page. For some reason, these two are broken. I need to look into it. These are the ones over here. These are from the old structure. I'm not sure why that one says it like that. Maybe the problem is that we did use the, the N, you know, Espanol has the little squiggly line on, on N, and Google can't find that version. So it's going to depend on the particular link. Promotions, this one's okay that it's broken because that promotion is not existing anymore. This is last year's promotion. Well, Christmas time is coming again, so we might run the promotion again, and therefore Google won't see that as a broken link anymore. Like uh, promotion 
New Year 2015. Well, there's only going to be one 2015, so that one is a broken link that will stay broken. But we'll say, no, that one's fixed because that's, that's old. So everything that I'm looking at here is under the section of crawl, crawl errors with a bunch of other information which we'll look at. And I'm going to back up to the dashboard because that's one piece to deal with, crawl errors. Then we've got search analytics. That's another interesting and useful screen to look at. We have um, search analytics. Uh, a bunch of options here I'll mention in a moment. Total clicks, you can hover over on that particular day, 197 clicks on that day. And then queries, these are the terms that people are searching for on Google to find your website. So people on Google are searching the name of the website, like yes, that's, that's bringing in total in this time period, 425 clicks, so traffic to the website. Some people are searching Texcoco restaurant. Okay, those two are very specific. You kind of know, need to know the name of the website in order for that kind of search to be useful. But then you go into these others that don't mention the name of the website. These are better. This is better data. People are searching for barbacoa, la coche, pulque. Those are three traditional Mexican uh, dishes. And so what this is telling me is that the keyword barbacoa is a hot keyword that people are looking for on Google. I can use that keyword in various ways. If we have Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever, I want to use that keyword there because I'll be putting that keyword out into the web more, attached to my website, the client's website, and bringing more traffic back to the website. There's a popular blog that we have called What is Wheat La Coche? Does anyone know what Wheat La Coche is? Basically, it, is, uh, it has various names. One is the Mexican Truffle. Another version of the name is Corn Smut, which basically what it is is corn that has been infected by a fungus that go, it turns it from yellow to like these very interesting like gray and green colors. You think, well, that, that corn is rotten. No, it's a delicacy. In, 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 in traditional Mexican cuisine because then you chop it up, you add some butter and onions and such. You know, people make food out of everything. So this is a very unique food that you almost never find in any Mexican restaurants because in this region it's a lot of Tex-Mex. That's how they make cheese and noodles. Here. Exactly. Cheese oh. comes from bacteria. So bacteria in this, fun, in this corn, okay, you might think that's gross, but no, it's a delicacy just like cheese technically is full of bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> Pulque is a traditional Mexican beverage made out of fermented maguey plants. Maguey plants are related to agave plants. Agave graduates into what? Tequila. Maguey plants graduate into pulque, which is an alcoholic Mexican beverage you may have never heard of. We've got a blog post about that, what pulque is. And so this is showing people are searching for this keyword, and we're getting these number of hits in this particular time period to the site. There's my game, it's right there, the my game plant. 15 hit clicks. Sometimes people search this keyword, this keyword, we look what you taste. What does we look what you taste like? So that's what this is. This screen is all about. This is the traffic coming to the site within this time period of, of the last month. Uh, or I can change the date right here. These are the keywords. What were the queries? What were the words people were searching for? Well, I could say, show me the pages. What are the pages that have most links, most clicks? The number one most clicked link is the home page, 922. The second most, about the restaurant in Spanish, Historia de la Barbacoa. So the history of barbecue, Mexican barbecue, 804 clicks. Then the menu. People go then, okay, I want to I wanna check out their menu. And then there's the pulque. And there's the Huitlacoche blog and the Maguey block. Contact form, number eight. So your GoDaddy gives you some of these statistics, Bluehost or whatever you have, give you some of these statistics. But Google Search Console, and we'll see later, Google Analytics, give you much more information. Sometimes even scary information, like how, how long do people stay on my site? What was the cell phone network provider? 
they use to visit my site. And we'll see why that information could be valuable. This kind of screen that tells me these in, this information is valuable because then I could, I could say, okay, if people keep visiting this history page, have I done everything that I can to make that page as most useful as possible? This website has an Order Now button. It also has a Book a Table button. Well, what if when someone reads that history and they get hungry, is there an easy way for then a person to click Buy Now or Book a Table to capitalize on all of those hits to that page? This one, uh, famous chef Andrew Zimmern came to the restaurant. We've got a blog post about that. It's 12th most popular within this time period. Does that also have a link over to the video of the, of the event? So far, I believe that video has about 12,000 views. Um, so it's just a bunch of things regarding SEO and social media that tie into this. You wouldn't know any of this until you set up the Webmaster Tools. What else? Countries. The number one visited con con traffic comes from the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. Australia is fourth popular, apparently. Most likely because Australia ha is pretty well known for their lamb. This restaurant focuses on lamb barbecue, traditional lamb barbecue from Mexico. So when people in Australia are searching for lamb, this client appears and hopefully enticing them to come visit and, and have a bite. It goes all the way down over here, Indonesia, Trinidad and Tobago, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, etc. So devices, mobile. Look at how they're very close to each other. Mobile and desktop 17 and 14 and tablet. Pretty small tablet. Not a lot of people visit on tablet. But notice mobile has taken over. That means our website better be mobile optimized. It better look great on a mobile device because more traffic is coming from there. And this site is, and therefore we're seeing we've got more traffic from the mobile. On these you can go in and oftentimes get a little bit more detail. Search type. What about the images that people are looking at and clicking from links and such, but most traffic comes from the web. And then dates, if I want to see, well, if I want to see, you know, the last 28 days or compare it this 28 days to the previous 28 days because the longer you have this set up the more data it will it will show you so uh, last month or two months ago 3.1 amount of traffic this month 3.4 and then it compares it right there so there was a tip in traffic there for some reason and then it jumps up there as November started then November came over here and then we had the big jump around uh, those dates and such. That is all within the search analytics screen and that was under uh, that was under the section of search traffic and there's many more things I haven't talked about just yet oh, like but there's this right here. To, to, to the, PGN, the, the dashboard here? Yeah, I was about to go into that one now. We talked about crawl errors and search analytics. We'll talk about sitemaps. Sitemaps are very useful, uh, highly recommended for a website. Think about it this way. If you visit a brand new mall in a new city and you want to go to a specific shop in that mall. How many of you are going to wander around until you find it? And how many of you are going to go to the mall directory? That map of everything in the mall. Once you go to the directory, then you're going to go directly to the store you want. That's what a sitemap is for a website. 
basically a map or a listing of everything on your website. Because when someone searches, what is pulque? And we have a web, a web page, what is pulque? And Google knows about it. It can then show that page to people that searched. So your site map is basically a list of all of the pages on your site and images and other stuff. The thing, though, about sitemaps is that you simply don't open Word and write everything down. It's not that kind of file. It's a very technical file that your website service provider or your website creation tool like WordPress creates for you because it's technical. It's written in XML, actually, not plain text. So I'm going to look at that screen, sitemaps. What this is saying is, Submitted and indexed. My site map has 155 um, web pages, and 154 of them were saved into the Google database. Why was one not saved? It'll stay on another screen. I submitted that site map, and it had 205 images, and 93 were saved. Now, it's not always going to accept everything that you get uploaded to it because some of it might sometimes be duplicate content. That picture might have already been already uploaded to Google. Google might already know about a particular picture or page. And um, um, so mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Um so but the website is the same like that had that you have that many pages. Maybe you upload the same page like maybe uh, a few times to make them look better. Well a um a software like WordPress creates a lot of pages actually, more than you think. Because let's say I've got pictures, I've got thumbnails. Mm -hmm. And if I click to view the large picture, that could be a page as well. So when WordPress shows the large version of a picture, oftentimes it shows it in its own page. So if I've got a page, gallery, and in gallery I've got seven pictures, those seven pictures probably have their own page as well. So then I've got the main gallery plus the seven. That's eight pages right there. So even though I thought I only created 10 pages, I probably have you know 50 pages because of the pictures or other media attached to a page. This is telling me, okay, we see your sitemap, there might be a, a problem, that's a warning, three warnings. Uh, but I can uh, click and then Google will say, okay, these are the pieces of your sitemap that we see, your categories, your events, your galleries, pages, etc. So again, this is a technical document that is created best with a plugin or, or special software that does it. I wouldn't myself try to create a sitemap. It's way too technical and complicated and annoying. But the software is good at it. WordPress creates sitemaps very easily. Most modern software can create sitemaps. But for example, if I then go further, okay, what does Google know about my categories? If I click on that, it'll go further in into detail right here. So it sees that we have Beverages, blogs, combos, desserts, etc. Quesadillas. So these are the categories that Google understands in my sitemap. And this is still the pretty version of it. The raw version of it looks like this. A XML code, which is like HTML, but I'm not going to beat myself writing these, these things. This is a little too complicated for regular people, even advanced web designers. You're going to have some sort of software, some sort of plugin, some sort of app that creates sitemaps for you. And if you've got the right software, the right plugin, every time something gets changed, what if we add a brand new category, such as takeout? My software will automatically update the sitemap and submit the new version to Google so that Google now knows you've got a new category. Back up here. Sitemap that's got a warning there. What's this warning? Book a table, choose your location. Some you are listed have a high response time. 
it's telling me that this page high response time and that means it might be a slow page for some reason this was detected however back in May slideshow So slide number four seems to have a have an issue. So that's the point of uh, setting up this whole search console. It tests the health of your site, and here are all the things that Google knows about the site. So here, this is going to be a big, uh, this is going to be a big one. Page. These are all the pages of the site contact page, the blog, the menu, reviews, the tortilla soup, call to action, so all of these pages. And then it says, well, this one's got 18 images. That's why sometimes we've got such large results. Even though you think you only created some content, you have all of this content that's linked. So 32, this one about the book of table seems to be a broken link. That's why it wasn't added to the index. That's why it wasn't stored in the database. Mm -hmm. Over here with submitted. It's a little bit more obtuse with images, but usually some images are not added to the index simply because they've already been they were already on the Google database. So those are the, the big three concepts here. We'll go into the detail of these other screens after the break. But this is the big idea of why you want Search Console set up. So it gives you all of this data, what's working, what's not working, what keywords are people using. And somewhere over here we'll see, does my site have spam and malware and all of that stuff. And you can do this again to many, as many websites really as you want, up to 100. And all of these will have their data. And you can look them up and find all that great info. We're going to take a break and then we'll look at other aspects of the Search Console. Then we'll talk about Google Analytics, which if you think this is a lot of information, Google Analytics has like 10 times the information. So it's 151. We'll take a break until 201. And then we'll come back and further explore the Search Console and then go on to Google Analytics.